All right, I will call to order the Common Council meeting on November 24th at 7.30. First up is Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, roll call, please, Pat. Alder Arata Frada? Yeah. Alder Clowder? Here. Alder Gerhardt? Here. Alder Krause? Here. Alder Maldonado? Here. Mayor Richardson? Here. Uh, Alder Schroeder? Alder Strassman? Here. Alder Odell? Here. We have a quorum, Mayor. All right, thank you. Uh, going on to a mayoral proclamation proclaiming November 28, 2020 as Small Business Saturday in the city of Fitchburg. Whereas the Common Council of Fitchburg, Wisconsin celebrates our local small businesses and the contributions they make to our local economy and community. According to the United States Small Business Administration, there are currently 28.8 million small businesses in the United States, representing 99.7% of all businesses with employees in the United States, are responsible for 63% of net new jobs created over the past 20 years. And whereas small businesses employ over 49% of all businesses with employees in the United States. And whereas 89% of all consumers in the United States agree that small businesses contribute positively to the local community by supplying jobs and generating tax revenues. And whereas 87% of consumers in the United States agree that small businesses are critical to the overall economic health of the United States. And whereas 93% of consumers in the United States agree it is important for people to support the small businesses that they value in their community. And whereas the city of Fitchburg, Wisconsin supports our local businesses that create jobs, boost our local economy, and preserve our neighborhoods. And whereas advocacy groups, as well as public and private organizations across the country have endorsed the Saturday after Thanksgiving as Small Business Saturday. Now, therefore, I, Aaron Richardson, Mayor of the City of Fitchburg, Wisconsin, do hereby proclaim November 28, 2020 as Small Business Saturday. And urge the residents of our community and communities across the country to support small businesses and merchants on Small Business Saturday and throughout the year. This year, especially utilizing curbside pickup and online ordering. Adopted this 24th day of November, 2020. And I don't see Angela from the Fitchburg Chamber, but we do have Joyce from our economic development team. Joyce, would you like to add anything? Thanks, Mayor, for um, recognizing our business community. Um, as we all know, they have um, been the backbone of our economy, and um, we are very grateful to have a strong business community, over 800 large and small businesses. At this time, I guess we're just asking everyone to patronize our businesses. Um, we appreciate what they do for us. They're constantly giving back to our community. And um, at this time, if anybody would like my Christmas list, I have tons of things that I'd like from our small business community. So um, please patronize them and thank you for the businesses that are out there. We appreciate everything you do for us. All right, thank you. I don't think Angela made it. So um, I don't think we have any residents for uh, non-agenda items. Randy, did you have something? Yes, Mayor. Uh, I would like to, since we have a, a number of city staff, I would like to, to motion that resolution R-205-20, recreation staffing in 2021, which is under direct referrals. I'd like to move it up to under public works so that the uh, city staff have an opportunity to participate and to leave once we're finished. All right, is there a second to move that? 
All right, seconded by, I think it was Gabriella. Uh, all in favor of moving up the resolution to after the public works items, say aye. 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 And aye. opposed, nay. All right, I will move that up. All right, I don't have anything else for that. So we can go on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion for that? So moved. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Mm -hmm. um, and, all right. Uh, is there anything that people want to remove from the, Julia, do you want to remove something from the consent agenda? Yes, I want to remove uh, 5BAA4 from the consent agenda. 5B4, all right. And Gabriella, did you have one as well? Yes, I'd like to remove the minutes. Okay. Anything else to be removed? All right, seeing none, all in favor of approving everything except for the minutes and 5B4, say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. All right. Uh, minutes, Gabriela, do you, uh, what do you have to change in there? Yes, last page of the minutes, page 18. Uh, it says we adjourned at 12, 12.49 p.m. We actually adjourned at 12.49 a.m. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right. Um, so would you like to make a motion as amended, maybe? Yeah, I move to amend the, the adjournment time to 12.49 a.m. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Is there a second? Second. second. All right. All in a favor of approving the amended minutes, say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. All right, that is approved. And then, uh, Julia, you had five before. Yes, I, I want to remove it because um, uh, the senior center director instruct me to do that because the contract is not finalized yet. Is it, are we postponing it or removing it for now? I don't know. If we, I don't know if you guys maybe know when this contract is going to be signed. So uh, I think the contract went to Valerie. Valerie found some a language that they need to modify and check with the insurance company. So we are waiting for the insurance company. Pat. Here, I would recommend postponement. Postponement. To a date certain in yeah. December. Okay. I guess the only question I have is, can we still refer it even though we don't have that contract? We just, in those committees, they can postpone it at that point. Wouldn't we, I, Pat, I guess I'd ask you, would we be better off referring it out so that when it does come, if we get it, you know, I don't know when Committee on Aging meets next, but if they, you know, meet before the next meeting, then they can come back right away and don't have to refer this again. Pat, do you yeah, I, have any thoughts? I think that would make sense at this point in time. And then if it's not ready, we could postpone it to a date certain at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, Dorothy. Yeah, um, Jill had said that she anticipates um, um, canceling the December meeting for Commission on Aging Well. And um, Commission on Aging Well needs to be, oh, yeah. the word well needs to be added to this. Um, I, I don't see any reason why it can't be referred to the committees and just not posted to those agendas yet if it's not ready to be posted to the agendas. Yeah, I mean, it might go to them. They can just postpone it at that point if they don't have all the information necessary. I don't know. Julia, she, go ahead. She, she asked me to remove it. and post, Yeah, I mean, so I don't know. Maybe she knows something that we don't know. Yeah, I mean, if, if I'm not mistaken, and Pat, you can correct me here, it doesn't hurt anything to refer it out, even though it's not complete. We wouldn't certainly vote on approving it without that information, and we wouldn't want those committees to vote on it either without that information either. That's correct, Mayor. Yeah. It doesn't hurt to refer it as long as um, the council doesn't take any action until the committees see it. Okay. So I don't know if, uh, you still want to move to approve it, Julia, or move to postpone it? Um, I, will, I will move to postpone it. Okay. Then 
I think we had a second on that. Actually, we do have a motion. Second. So uh, all in favor of postponing resolution R214-20, say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. Nay. Uh, we have to, I don't know. If we can do a roll call, please. Yeah, let's do a roll. Um, Alder Arata Frada. Aye. Alder Clowder. Aye. Alder Gerhardt. Aye. Alder Krause. No. Alder Maldonado. Aye. Alder Schroeder. Try again, Sarah, we missed you. I didn't hear that. Nay, I apologize. Okay. Alder Strassman? Yes. Alder O'Dell? Aye. It passes, Mayor, um, All right. six to two. All right, then that is postponed for now. All right, that is all the items on there. I did see, oh, is Angela Leaf? I think she left. Oh, okay. All right, uh, then the minister's report, Pat. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, several items to report tonight. Um, the first of which is that property bills uh, will go out between the 10th and 15th of December. Um, we're changing things up a little bit this year due to the pandemic. We're encouraging um, our taxpayers to uh, pay, if they wanna do it in person, to pay by appointment. So they would set up an appointment uh, with the finance staff and come in accordingly. Um, as always, uh, our public can pay online via e-check for $1. They can pay by credit card with the appropriate fees in place and that can get fairly expensive given the percent there. Or they can pay uh, the old way by mail. Um, the if, if they wanted a receipt, they could put a return envelope in if they wanted to pay by mail and we would mail them back a receipt so they would have that in time if they wanted to do their taxes early. Um, the next is uh, the postal station within Sue's Hallmark uh, will remain open at least through 1231 of this year. We're gonna be working with the post office, our economic development office, Mike and Joyce, uh, on next steps to keep a postal station in Fitchburg. But at this point in time, the contract is with Sue's Hallmark and um, after 1231, that could go away. So it just adds up to everybody that uh, we could lose our post office, but we're doing everything we can to keep that. Um, thirdly, the Holiday Light Tour is 1219 of uh, December, I mean, the 19th of December. Um, we have a lot of people signing up. Uh, Lisa's stated that this is the biggest event to date for the Light Tour. So um, it's good to get um, some opportunity for some people to get out there and enjoy something this holiday season. So drive-by light tour on 1219. Also in regards to the holiday, Back TV is planning a Zoom talk with Santa that'll occur on December 4th. So anybody interested in that, uh, look on the city website um, and make those appropriate contacts for December 4th. Obviously I'm doing a lot of the um, uh, Tracy's responsibilities tonight because she is doing the Fitchburg portion of the recount tonight um, with the county. Um, I don't have any details on that, and we probably won't have you know final details from some for some time on the recount. But um, Tracy hopes to be in this meeting sometime later. She's also assisted the county uh, with recounts of the other communities. I want to thank her for that. Um, just on a sort of a more positive note, our building inspectors, inspectors have reported that we currently have 30 single family homes 
uh, under construction that's within the over 100 single family homes that we've seen get permits this year. So about 70 plus of those homes have occupancy permits right now, which is great news. People can move in uh, or have moved in prior to the winter season. We also have a few uh, multifamily projects that are under construction. And um, so things are rolling, our building inspections department's very busy. We also have several commercial properties that um, are being developed out there and we'll have over a thousand building permits this year, 1,000. So that's a record at least since I've been here and uh, it's good to see this type of activity during a pandemic. Well, that's all I have, Mayor. All right, thank you. Sure. Any questions, Dorothy? And then Julie after that. Yeah, Pat, when you were talking about property tax payments, um, did you mention Dropbox access for that? Um, and if that, if people can put checks in the Dropbox, uh, what is the last day they should put them in that Dropbox uh, for staff to pick them up and mark them as received? Yes, I'm, I apologize. We will have the Dropbox. It's the same Dropbox as we had for the election. We'll be checking that Dropbox on a regular basis and that will be up to the last Friday of the of the month. I'm not sure of the date on that, but the last Friday of December at 5 p.m. we'll be checking that Dropbox. Looks like the 27th. Yeah. All right, Julia, you had a question? Julia, did you have a question? No, it was the same question that Dorothy, so fine. All right. Great. Yeah. All right, thank you, Pat. All right, on to Planning Commission. Uh, Tom, do you want to do a motion for number one? Thanks, Mayor. I do a motion for number one. Uh, before I stated, uh, I had a family uh, problem and I was not at the plan commission the last time, so the mayor will have to be the one to carry on one, two, and three. But I will read them, just so you know. It's resolution R213-20, CS 237020, a resolution approving certified survey request, CS 237020 by Samuel Cook and K. Cook to divide property associated with 53 35 Lacey Road into one lot and one out lot. Lot one CSM 3060 Plan Commission. Did they approve? They did. I move approval. Second. Seconded by Sarah. And I do, um, I can speak to this quick. I do have a couple of people that uh, sent some comments in. Uh, this is a historic home on Lacey Road. They have, I think it's about five acres, but this is just taking, it's like an acre and a half or acre, acre and a half around the house and splitting that off into a lot and the rest is gonna be an out lot. So they can't do anything on the rest of the property until they come back in. And they are looking to sell the house to like a chiropractor, a small type medical type uh, business and uh, they don't expect a lot of traffic to that re uh, residence, but it will be um, kind of that mixed use and it is zoned for mixed use, so it does fit that zoning. And uh, I do have a couple of comments here. Joe and Karen Reedon from Fitchburg are in favor of both this one and number three is the, the same thing, which is the land division and the zoning on that property. And I also have uh, Patrick Cheney from Fitchburg is a former member of the McGaw Park Neighborhood Plan Steering Committee and Sam's Cook, Sam Cook's plan is in agreement with that McGaw Park Neighborhood Plan and consistent with the comp plan. And at Sam's request, I emailed Sam's detailed descriptions and his final version plan to all members of the East Fitchburg Neighborhood Association. All members of the East Fitchburg Neighborhood Association received this and all were invited to comment and I heard no objections from anyone. I think this is good, a good and favorable plan by officials of this neighborhood. I'm in support of this proposal by Sam and Kay Cook. And so that's what I have. Any questions on this at all? Gabriella? Point of order. 
Um, is it possible to just clarify? So uh, I know we recently changed the rules about speaking, reading statements out loud. Mm -hmm. Could we clarify at what what threshold we do read them versus when we don't read them and only read registered and supporter against? I believe I said five or less I'll, on an item. I'll read them. Okay, so if there are few five or fewer comments written comments, you will read all the written comments. And if there are more than five, then it's only registered for or against. Correct. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Shannon, did I see your hand? No? Okay. Any other comments on this? All right. Seeing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. All right. Then that is approved. This one time. The next one, number two, is Ordinance 2020-0-23, an ordinance amending Chapter 26 of the sign ordinance relative to flag signs. Uh, Planned Commission, I'll move approval. Second. Signed by Sarah. I just want to verify one thing here quick. Gabriella was that one. Oh, Gabriella, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. I uh, just want to check. Uh, so actually, Plan Commission tabled this one uh, only to look, try and get some more information about it. Um, or I postponed it, actually, for uh, the next month. So um, I don't know if you want to maybe withdraw and move to... I'll withdraw that, that, absolutely. I'll withdraw that and move to table it till it was the next meeting. Or? Uh, well, it's after the next Plan Commission meeting. Okay. So. All right. Yep. Is there a second to table it? Right, Randy. And uh, just so you know, we just wanted to make sure that uh, this is something, this flag ordinance is not something we actually have in our ordinances right now. And a lot of people do have flagpoles up, but businesses and individuals. And we want to just make sure that we don't pass something that uh, some of the flagpoles are in violation of, or they don't make a lot of sense. Um, just want to make sure that we got all our T's crossed and I's dotted and don't pass something that some people are kind of in violation of. So that's why I wanted to postpone it for now. All right. All in favor of postponing, say aye. 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 And, aye. Op and opposed, nay. All right. So that is tabled. All right. Next one, Tom. The last one, number three, is ordinance 2020-0-24. Uh, RZ 237120 uh, ordinance um, amending approval rezone request RZ 233120 by Samuel Cook and K. Cook to rezone property associated with the addresses 5335 Lacey Road from um, transitional agricultural district to small lot agriculture and business general district. The lot is one CSM. 3060 plan. I'll move the uh, plan commission approval. All right. Is there a second? Right. Saying goodbye. I think that was Sarah that time. <laughs> and uh, I have the public comments are the same uh, for the previous one. This is the same thing we just talked about. It's the property on Lacey Road and just uh, doing the rezoning to make sure that it's all right to have that. Uh, chiropractor, and I think it's a small medical type thing. It's not going to be a lot of traffic, they said. Uh, Julia, do you have a question? Yeah, my question is that um, a couple of months ago, we voted, there was another lot in that area, Lacey Road, that it was general business, and we converted to to residential zoning, and they, one of the, I think it was mentioned that it would be great to keep those lot to be residential. So my question is, this one is going to be a chiropractor. What about the traffic? What about what is expected to be in that corridor and Lacey Road that we have general business zoning? So why is why is okay to convert some of them to residential? I want to keep them as a commercial. I want to understand the logic. Uh, actually, we did not convert it to residential. We added the residential option, but uh, this property is still mixed use. So it could be mixed use or residential. There's a strip of land that goes over a few different property owners. And it was just creating that as an option. 
but it is also mixed use. So it was really just creating more flexibility, but this is kind of under that mixed use designation and is in line with the original intent of this area. Uh, I believe that some of the other property that kind of fronts Lacey Road around there, they, they, I don't know if anything things even in the works right now, actually, um, but they wanted that flexibility to do residential or um, business or whatever it might be, but it continued to be mixed use and uh, the planning team, the staff had no issue and thought that it did meet that mixed use need. And they will have requirements for parking and handicap parking and all those things as well. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And opposed nay. All right, that is approved. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Public Works, Sarah. I'll make a motion to approve resolution R-195-20, accepting subdivision improvements in the Plata Fahey Fields. Second, Second. by Randy. Uh, did Public Works approve? Yes. All right, and what's this about? This one, uh, the city engineer inspected and approved the subdivision improvements within this plat of Fahey Fields. All right, any questions at all? Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. All right, that one's approved. Next one. Make a motion to approve resolution R-19620, authorizing acceptance of minor modification to contract with AE2S for stormwater management study for the Curry Court and Old Indian Act trail areas. Give me a second. Hey, call. Sounded by Julia. Did Public Works approve? Yes. Did finance approve? Yes. All right, what's this one about? This was the attorney for the AE2S requested two minor modifications for the contract, uh, primarily replacing occurrence, the word occurrence with claim and adding the word ne negligent and kind of a cleanup of the contract. All right, so a little housekeeping almost, making it, all right. Any questions on this one? Yep. All right, seeing no questions, all in favor say aye. 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 And opposed nay. All right, that one's approved. Next up. All right, I'll make a motion to approve resolution R199920, approving a public pedestrian bike path and sidewalk easement, easement on outlot 15 and Nine Springs intersection of Lacey Road and Haight Farm Road. Seconded by Randy. Did Public Works approve? Yes. And I know Planning Commission also approved. What's this one about? This is just um, requiring a sidewalk along that north side of Lacey Road. Uh, it's called out just that it's a supplement to the agreement for the subdivision improvements, just right along our lot 15. All right. Any questions on this one? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And opposed nay. All right, that Aye. one's approved. One more, Sarah. Sorry, this one. Uh, R20420. Yes. yes. We'd like to make a motion to table indefinitely. So I'll just, uh, it's because of the lot owner sold to current owner and it can't be treated as a supplement just for that background information. So I'd like to make a motion to table indefinitely resolution R20420, approving supplement to agreement for subdivision improvements in the plat of Nine Springs for outlot 15. All right. Is there a second to table? Okay. Seconded by Shannon. Uh, Julia, you had a question? Yes, how, how do we table this one and we approve the one before? Is there no a correlation between the two? Sarah, do you want to? The way that Bill had explained it, which I hope I don't butcher this, but just that um, it was how, since the outlot was um, sold, that supplement division couldn't apply anymore for this specific resolution. So it was just since it was the lot owner selling it, it couldn't be treated as a supplement. So it almost was a, 
formality of the treating it as a supplement rather than just a resolution to include the connector path. So it was a different type of uh, So Yeah, go ahead, Julia. Can I ask another question to yep. Sarah? Where is this uh, this lot? How lot yeah. 15? This is the one kind of by the Addison on Hate Farm and Lacey. Is oh, okay. It's that senior housing right at that roundabout where Lacey Road takes matter. the sharp left. Oh, there. Okay. Sorry, Sarah, you were breaking up a little bit on us. <laughs> I know my internet's really poor. I'm sorry. <laughs> Man. All right. Any other questions? All right. Then, all in favor of tabling indefinitely, say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. All right, that is tabled. All right, now we're going to jump to direct referral E1, which is resolution R20520. Uh, Sarah, since you're Parks, do you want to make a motion for this maybe? Sure. Uh, I'd make a motion. Let me just get here. Uh, Make a motion to approve resolution R20520, recreation staffing in 2021. Is there a second? Second. Sent by Gabriella. And I believe Parks made an action on this, didn't they, Sarah? We actually took the recommendation from personnel where uh, they had modified the resolution to clarify that we would ask the staff to do what they could to keep the uh, recreation staffing as best they could. So we took the recommendation from the personnel committee and Parks did it. All right, and then Dorothy, the personnel talked about it sounds like as well. <laughs> Correct, and the recommendation that we made was because um, Pat had basically relatively assured us that there are pockets of money that they can appropriately find to cover those expenses the personnel expenses and he, he may want to speak to that okay and then hold on i think finance also discussed it julia right yeah in finance we postponed this uh, resolution to next council meeting we discussed the option that misty provide us and we decided that since there are some options that are coming um i don't think that we should uh, uh we didn't agree with the language of the resolution um, so we are postponing to get um, one of the resolution coming with some of the solutions. So I don't know, Misty can, if Misty can, can share with the council what are those options, it would be great. Yeah, I don't know if Sarah or Misty wants to go first, unless, Gabriella, did you have a question before we have staff talk about it? No, we can talk about this first. I do have a comment, okay. but we, I can save it. Okay. Sarah or Misty, I'm not sure who wants to speak to this first. I'd or Pat. Be more appropriate if Sarah kicked this oh, off. Or, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't hear Sarah Olson. the other yeah. Sarah talking. Oh, and you're talking about the other Sarah. I apologize. Sorry. <laughs> hey there. Um, so, yeah, we find ourselves in a really tough situation. Can you hear me now? Oh, can, can you hear me hear now? You. We can I hear you in council know. chambers. Okay. Um, so yeah, we had found ourselves in a really tough situation where um, recreation programming was um, very much reduced in 2020. And so we had redeployed our two recreation folks, um, Chad and Austin into public works where they really helped out in parks, um, got a lot of work done. And so as we move into 2021, again, with concern whether or not we're gonna be able to provide recreation um, you know, in 2021, how would we pay for the salaries of these two individuals? So that's where um, we brought it to personnel, our concerns about, um, you know, basically a $93,000 hole if we were going to try to maintain status quo and both of those staff employed and fully uh, being paid the same amount that they are. So the, the work's there. We can redeploy them again to parks if recreation is not in full swing right away in 2021. But um, again, we have to try to come up with that money. So uh, Misty did a lot of work to try to figure out where we could pull that money. So I'm going to hand it over to Misty where she can present uh, to you some of the options that she presented to finance. 
if I may, Aaron. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I guess starting with kind of process of it. So since this resolution was brought forward without the budget amendment, and there's no indication on the resolution for public purposes that we would be considering the budget amendment, it needs to be done as a separate resolution. Uh, so I am working on a direct referral to the next meeting, um, which would include one of the options that um, was suggested by the mayor. Um, if any other buddy else on council has another budget amendment that they want considered, uh, we follow the same council agenda rules. So take two older people um, to get something else on the agenda again for the 12-8 meeting. Um, so the one that I uh, finished costing today and I'm putting forward the budget amendment resolution for for the next meeting is to reduce the cost of living and the pay for performance adjustment. So the 2021 adopted budget included a 2% cost of living increase for all of the non-represented staff and a 1% pay for performance base for non-represented staff. The budget amendment would reduce the COLA from 2% to 1% and then reduce the pay for performance base from 1% to 0%. Uh, by doing those two things, it would be a savings in the general fund and the FAC TV fund, which is funded by property taxes of $94,521, which would make up that $93,000 hold that Sarah mentioned. Pat, is there anything that you'd like to add? Um, all I would like to add is that uh, this has gone through um, the personnel committee of the parks and finance and um, there was obviously um, Julia noted that there was uh, a motion to uh, postpone at finance, but there was concurrence at the other two committees that um, uh, the council and the staff looked for additional funds to fill those positions as is. That's all I would add. All right, thank you. Yeah, I'll just you know speak a little bit to this as well. This is, there are no good answers here. Uh, obviously, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, when we were first putting this budget together months ago, we were hoping that things would be getting better by now and it wouldn't be a problem. We also had hoped that the federal government would actually do something and you know give us more federal CARES funding or something like that. That is what we use this year for those positions. And they haven't done that yet either. And so there's kind of a, at least a short term hands tied thing here and um, you know just working with staff there's no good answer you know it's either you know take one of the positions and temporarily lay them off as short a time period as possible hopefully something like cares funding or something like that will come forward soon or you know you can do something like reduce the cola from two percent to one percent and zero percent pay for performance per pay for performance which then means all staff, except for the represented, the police, the fire union uh, staff, uh, all those people would have zero pay for performance and only one set of 2% cost of living adjustment. And you know, that's, that spreads out across, across everyone, um, but that's also a, a tough, because it was a tough year, obviously, for staff and all staff, including the rec staff, you know, have done a great job this year, uh, you know, serving our residents and so, that's a challenge too. I, there's not really a right answer or wrong answer. Um, that there's just no good options really. But the hope is that it's as temporary as possible. Um, so it's yeah. I guess I'm open to what other people are thinking as well. Uh, Gabriella, I know that you had your hand up, and I'll go with Dorothy and Julie after that. Yeah, I'll make a, a couple of comments. Number one, I you know I was pleased to have we had a pretty good conversation about potential alternate funding options with Misty summarized here, but we talked about it quite a lot in finance. And I am looking forward to having a discussion about potential budget amendments to fill that $93,000 gap so we can keep these positions in place. So my preference would be to postpone this to the December 8 meeting when we have more discussion. On a separate note, um, personnel committee did amend this resolution. It's page 225 of the packet. And I guess I was a little bit confused because my understanding of what I voted on for amending it in personnel was that we added that phrase in red, but I did not think that we removed the previous phrase. Uh, so I wonder if Tom and Dorothy might be able to jog my memory if, if I'm misremembering that, but uh, I thought we had only added to the resolution and had not removed something. All right, I've got uh, Dorothy next. 
Okay, I'd, I'd have to look back to answer your question, Gabriella. I'm not sure. Um, what I wanted to ask though is if in the new resolution, uh, we are or we will add in um, a clause at saying that if CARES money comes through, that we would be applying this and then rolling back those COLA adjustments and things. Ms. DeAnne. Ms. Dee, do you wanna speak to so, uh, There's a concern with that. So CARES funding is very specific about what is eligible and what is not eligible. Uh, based on the last round of funding, uh, backfilling lost revenue was not something that was eligible. Um, so we wouldn't be able to use that to backfill the lost rec fees. And then likely we would just have to watch how that would go because we couldn't say that we're gonna use CARES funding to give a cost of living increase to staff either. So it would have to likely go to something very COVID specific. So we don't have the regulations at this point yet, but just be cautious about what we will and will not be able to use that funding for. Okay, you, you had been talking about um, maintaining those positions this year because we had CARES money to maintain them with. Uh, what, how, can you explain that more fully? Yeah, so the CARES funding didn't go to redeploy those staff directly. The CARES funding went to pay for the other costs that we had that were COVID related. So we didn't have to absorb those within the other parts of our budget. And then we did have some other bigger ticket items that actually paid for the redeployment, like the vacancy in the public works department and a couple other uh, things like that. So the CARES funding didn't directly go to the redeployment, but it helped the overall budget of the city. Okay, that's what, how I was confused, thanks. Mm -hmm. No problem. All right, Julia. Yeah, so uh, we have a very good discussion on finance, and uh, I know that the you know the COLA reduction is something that you know is uh, is going to affect uh, most of the city staff, but also we are doing this in order to keep two uh, um, you know jobs, and I think we need to you know I will I will be very proud of the city staff if they. They go along with this because we are trying to keep two positions open in a very, very difficult time. And our finance committee is, uh, we discussed that we want to keep this, po this position. We don't want them to be laid off. And especially Austin, that he has the health insurance through the city. Um, if he's lost his job, even though he's gonna be covered for three additional months, you know, what happened after the three months? We don't know for how long this pandemic is gonna last. And I particularly, I, wanna, I don't want to see any, uh, you know, person losing his health insurance in the middle of a health crisis. So I think we need to do the best um, that we can do to find the money to cover this two position. Um, this is something temporary. The vaccine is coming. And maybe by summer of fall, we are going to have our recreational activity coming to some sort of normal. But I think we need to do the best to keep these two positions. So um, I know that it's going to be difficult to absorb us, you know, to take a reduction at 1%. But I think keeping 1% of the COLA is something, you know, uh, for the rest of the city staff. and. And this is something that, you know, we discuss in finance and we think that it's a good compromise to cope, to maintain these two positions. All right. Misty, one question I had, you know, to something, doing something like COLA and taking that away, trying to move it back, you know, put it back in later if possible. Is that easier or harder or more difficult than doing something like I'm just gonna pick something that I know we passed, you know, in the, in the budget amendments was like the LTE horticulturist position. You know, let's say we instead, at least for now, didn't decided we're not gonna fund that after all, and I can't, it's not even that much money. It's not certainly not $93,000, but, you know, taking a project like that out, at least for now, is that something that's easier to put back in later? Or I guess it all depends on if there's CARES funding and what the rules are, but I'm just curious if one is easier or harder than the other. Depends on what your plan is for the backfill. So if you're thinking that maybe we'll get CARES funding and we'll use that to help, I would suspect that neither of those 
um, ideas would be eligible for CARES funding. So I don't think that would put it back in. But we did talk at Finance Committee about, you know, maybe COVID does go away to the most part and we have REF programs in the summer and our revenues are expected to be higher than what we're thinking now. At that point, we could pivot um, and we could establish a, a additional cost of living adjustment from that point forward, um, figuring out what that amount would be as an option. We just have to be very careful with the CARES funding that we don't apply it to something that's not eligible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other questions? Tom. Misty, I just got a comment and a question for you. Um, I know you will, but these numbers have been thrown around and I'm hearing three different numbers. When I heard parks, it was $98,000. Personnel, we got $92,000. Tonight, I heard it was $94,000. Um, just for next week, you know, um, would you recheck those numbers and make sure they're right or get the right number? Because I don't like hearing these numbers. And furthermore, in the future for the staff, I know I was a little hard at personnel the last meeting, but it was so close to the budget. I can't believe we're talking about this now. It just amazes me. In fact, I'm mad about it and I, I'll bite my tongue. But I know the staff knew about it. And in the future, if you know that something like this is going to happen and you come up against the budget, why wasn't this brought up? Here we're talking about it, and we just passed a million-dollar budget. And it just makes no sense to me why we sat on this for whatever reason. But I know, I know you were working on probably keeping these people on board, which I appreciate. But you know what? The council should have been informed. We should have known about this. Now we know about it and we just passed the budget. It's just for the future, that's all I'm saying. You know, if you hear something and you're coming up against a budget, for God's sake, bring it up. That's all, that's all I'm saying. I can speak to that, Tom. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why. One, is that, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago when we approved it, at that point you couldn't bring new amendments to the floor. And so, you know, at that point you couldn't say, well, we want to instead do this or do that because you can't bring new items to the floor at that point. And then the other piece is you, it's confusing because you have to essentially approve everything in the budget and then change it later because if you said, well, we're just going to have 0% COLA, for example, two weeks ago, well, then it's not in the budget at all. And so you can't take that and put it somewhere else. And so it's confusing kind of the different steps and how you have to do that because, um, it, and it's not easy, obviously, or anything like that. And it was, you know, it's a confusing process as it is. So that's kind of the two things, two reasons for that. And Misty, I don't know if you want to speak more to that at all. Sure. So I'll say we did roughly identify that it was going to be a problem in the mayor's letter. It mentioned that, you know, we were budgeting as though COVID wasn't here for 2021 um, for REC programs in particular, because we wanted that flexibility so that if COVID really did go away, that we would have that opportunity to just jump right in and keep things going. Um, the flip side of that was we could have done a budget that assumed COVID was here and have these hard decisions now, but then adding the stuff back into the budget and adding levy back in is um, is harder to do from a process perspective. So we, we kept that flexibility in there and noted that if it goes away, an adjustment would need to be made on park rec expenses to account for it. And I do have that actual number, Tom, if you're interested. So it's 92,971 is the exact number. And so we're rounding it to 93,000. All right, Julia. Yes, uh, I want to agree with Tom, and I want to disagree with you and Misty because I know that you know if you 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 already knew in the letter in your budget that this one will be come, why you didn't tell us as an uh, as another week before we put up an amendment that maybe we should we should keep that forty seven thousand dollar allocated for this position, you know? So, you know, I don't I disagree with I don't understand your logic, Mayor, and I think that. 
we should have been informed because I knew, I, I think that you knew guys before uh, when you were putting your budget that this one was be a, a, a issue. So, you know, so, so it's fine. Now we find a solution, but, you know, in the future we should be, you know, informed before. Any other comments or thoughts? All right. And I, Mayor, yeah, go I, ahead. I, I didn't hear the motion in the second. Who made those? Uh, let's see. I think, I guess I'm not even sure what the, I think, Sarah, you did the motion. Was it to approve? And I don't know if you want to withdraw it to postpone or not, but. Yes, I made the initial motion to approve. I don't okay, thank you. You can withdraw it or we can vote on approving it now. It's up to you. I move to postpone to December 8th. Hold on, hold on. Sarah's frozen. Sorry, Sarah, I couldn't hear you. Uh, yep, I can withdraw my uh, motion to approve. Okay, all right. So that is withdrawn. And then, Gabriella, do you want to do a motion? I move to postpone to the December 8th council meeting. All right. Echo. Saying about Julia. All right. I don't think we need any more discussion, but if someone has any further comments, that's great. All right. Then all in favor of postponing until next meeting on the 8th, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right. That is postponed. All right. Going back to committee reports. Uh, Park Commission, Sarah. For parks, we had our um, one special meeting on November 19th to discuss the amendment we just reviewed. And our next scheduled meeting is December 3rd. No other updates. All right, thank you. Uh, library board, Randy? Uh, yes, the uh, <clears throat> library board met last Wednesday, November 18th. Uh, a good portion of the meeting uh, discussion on the 2021 library budget. Uh, it was uh, adopted, and then there was discussion on the uh, review of the library bylaws. Um, <clears throat> But I do want to mention that the uh, curbside uh, services have been winterized and everything is going well, uh, considering today was the first snowfall, so it was a good test. Um, and another point is that the uh, Take Home Tuesday, uh, which are the craft kits for kids 2 through 5 and 6 through 12, are now happening every week. So uh, we put them out there at the, uh, we, they're put out at the 10 a.m. and uh, hour and patrons can pick them up while the supplies last. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commission on Aging Well. Thank you. Uh, we met recently. Um, the main item on the agenda was a presentation on the Healthy Neighborhoods Initiative. Um, beyond that, there's always a report from department that lists the whole variety of programs and adaptations to programs that the uh, senior center is doing, which I really, really enjoy having those available for our community members. Um, so th those are listed in the minutes from the last meeting. If anyone wants to check those out, uh, our next scheduled meeting is 1210. But as we said, um, there's a good likelihood that that will be um, canceled. All right, RCC. Hi. So uh, a couple of small updates for things that people can look into. Fitchburg actually offers a toilet rebate program, which is if you install a low flow toilet that uses water efficiently, you can actually get a hundred dollar rebate from the city. If you Google Fitchburg toilet rebate program, it'll pop right up and you can see the instructions on how to apply. So check that out. We also have a really fantastic recycling guide uh, that the staff puts together. Uh, it's really in depth and I, I recommend downloading the PDF and it gives you resources, not just for what you can put in your cans, but what you can bring to the, uh, the recycling facility in Fish Hatchery Road and, and where you can get rid of things that don't, the, the city doesn't do, but, but where you can call to, to get things, certain things removed. So it's great. If you Google Fitchburg Recycling Guide, it should pop right up. And it's also in Spanish in, in addition to English. And 
then you should also know that the fish hatchery recycling site is still open. Uh, we, it does accept uh, large broken down cardboard boxes. So I know a lot of people are getting shipments now uh, for various reasons, but because of the pandemic and because Christmas is coming up or other um, end of year holidays. So if you have those boxes and you wanna drop them, you can't fit in your, in your bin and you wanna bring them to the recycling site, go ahead and do that. Make sure you break down those boxes before you put them in the bins. And if there is not room, throw them back in your car and bring, bring them back later. Cause if they stay outside, they're just gonna end up in the trash. So uh, that's a reminder for the, the fish hatcher recycling site. And you can search again, Google, and you should be able to find it pretty easily uh, on the Fitchburg website. Thanks. All right. How about uh, transportation and transit? No update. All right. Uh, Cedo, Julia. Okay. So CEDA meeting is scheduled for Thursday, December 10 at seven o'clock via Zoom. And then the Fish Food Business Loan Committee has approved five loans for a total of $47,500,000. And they also received two applications that they came in November for, for a request of another $20,000. And the other thing is the next and final deadline for the business loan application is Tuesday, December 15. Also, um, there was a quick trip held uh, a neighborhood meeting for the proposed project at the corner of Sain and Cheryl, uh, Cheryl Drive. Um, there is a link, if you want the link and watch the um, Zoom meeting, I can send it to you. Uh, approximately 40 people participate in that Zoom meeting with a good discussion, a lot of questions. As I mentioned before, by choice, Saturday is shop a small business. Uh, so um, the, we need to patronize our um, and support our small businesses here in Fitchburg. We can do it online. There are a couple of, a uh, lot of uh, business in Fitchburg that they have an online presence. So I would recommend that. Um, also, I want to mention that with the application for the four and 9% tax credit is open from November 20 to December 11. Um, and also, um, there, there is an information to our program to help farmers who are facing mental health challenges. Uh, so if you want, I can send you this information. It's the Farm Center, uh, part of a multi-state effort focusing on farming mental wellness. I can send you the information to you. Uh, so, um, so the Farm Center at the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection is a part of a new 12 state effort aimed to providing education, resources, and support to farmers, agriculture service professionals, and mental health care providers to mitigate farm stress and reduce suicide risk in rural communities. So that one is a great program for our, we have a lot of local farmers here in Fitchburg. So regarding development update, um, Mayor is finalizing their subdivision improvement agreement with the Fitchburg Public Works. Also the quarry which senior housing that is going behind super target is or is under construction. JT Klein uh, got his plan, uh, final plan commission approval for the limestone rich workforce housing for the lot south of Hyvee. And also if you have been driving the fish hatchery road you have seen that a steel is going up for the new Park ba Bar Bank branch at the corner of Fish Hatchery Road and Greenway Cross. Also, um, the brick is going up uh, on the Terrace Point apartment. That is where the former juice plant site was. And the Discovery Storage is a vertical storage project north of Saris. Uh, have their footing and foundation in place. So all of these development are coming to the city. So, um, and then uh, there's gonna be a Zoom housing committee meeting or a schedule for December 14. And CIDA is planning on having Lori Heinemann from the Madison Development Corporation to discuss the new affordable housing fund. And also Sonia will discuss the APU 8 use um, and other engagement in the uh, development process with the housing committee. So uh, that's it. All right. Thank you. Ag and Rural Affairs. Uh, Ag and Rural Affairs met last Tuesday, November 17th. A uh, good portion of the meeting, we discussed the agricultural accessory 
related uses in the city agricultural zoning districts. Uh, there was also discussion on purchase of development uh, rights programs. And uh, the uh, third item was the uh, brief discussion on uh, taking rural broadband, broadband to the rural portions of Fitchburg. Uh, Roger Colhe and, and myself have been kind of charged with uh, uh, trying to move that project or initiate a project, and we're working with city staff. So that's all I have. All right, thank you. Uh, EMS, Shannon. Uh, no report. All right, by committee, Joe. <laughs> um, Our next meeting is December 1st, which is a Tuesday at 7.30 a.m., uh, it, it's listed as being in the council chambers, but it's all virtual. Um, and an agenda should be up um, within the end of the week. All right, tree advisory. No update. All right, landmarks preservation. Is that nothing? All right, uh, housing advisory. Um, I've got meeting scheduled 1224. Was that the same date that you had mentioned, Julia? I thought uh, I'd say the 14th. They told me the 14th. I don't think it'd be the 24th. That's Christmas Eve. Okay. Okay, I, I, I have to recheck the calendar then. Maybe I wrote it down wrong. But Julia pretty much talked about yeah. what that is. So that's the only thing that I had on that. All right. How about healthy yeah. neighborhoods? It, it is the 14th, if I may interrupt. Okay, thank you. I will change my notes. Anything for healthy neighborhoods, Dorothy? Um, just that we have a doodle poll out uh, to set up a meeting for mid-December. All right. Thank you. Uh, Finance Committee, Julia. Uh, in the Finance Committee meeting, we... Uh, we discussed several resolutions, but also we approved the detailed review of of our check issue, check number 121372-121424, dated November 1st to November 15th, totally $1,051,049 with 46 cents. And also we review the PICA transaction for the cycle ending October 6, 2020, with a total of 212000 $335 with 74 cents. And then um, one of the resolution is I need a uh, move approval of resolution R-198-20 approving, approving an affiliate agreement with the Madison Water Utility. Second. Second. All right, so by Gabriella got it first. What, what's this about, Julia? So this one is the there are some property uh, in the city of Fitchburg that they are served by the city of Fitchburg sewer utility and the city of Madison water utility. And the city of Madison water utility maintain a record of the customer billing information and meter usage, which is needed by the city of Fitchburg to ensure that we're billing appropriate amount of customer for sewer services. But then um, we need to sign, we have to, um, we draft, um, um, a memorandum of understanding with the city of Madison that they can uh, give us access to the, this customer uh, because of privacy, uh, privacy issues. So this is what is about that, that we have a memorandum of understanding with the city of Madison. All right. Any... Uh, I don't know. That one is this, Gabriela. Is any or Randy? Did I miss something? Randy, do you, hmm? you got anything? Oh. No, you, oh. uh, you covered everything, Julia. Thank okay. you. Any questions at all? Seeing none, then. All in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. All right, that is approved. Uh, going on to personnel, Dorothy. Uh, when when we met, we we talked about the um, city admin issue. We'll be talking about that later again today, um, as well as the recreation staffing. As far as I know, we do not have another meeting pending. All right, thank you. Public safety, Sarah? We did not meet tonight and we'll just have to check to see if we'll have uh, another meeting scheduled um, based on if we have agenda items. 
All right, sounds good. Uh, I can go last, so I don't take anyone's thunder and anything they want to say. And I don't think we've started with District 3 in a while. So how about uh, Sarah? Do you want to go first? What? I, I couldn't no hear anything. Sure, I can right. go. I don't right. have really any updates. Just to say that wishing everyone a happy Thanksgiving. Really understanding that it's difficult because... People want to be with their families, but just really encouraging social distancing and wearing a mask. I know that the reports within the news are very scary and just um, want to reiterate, please wear a mask. <laughs> please stay home. Please consider it's supposed to be beautiful outside this weekend. Go for a walk. Enjoy the weather, social distance. But that's the only update I have. Thanks. All right. Shannon. Um, no comment. <laughs> All right. Tom. Thanks, Mayor. I just have two things. Uh, the first one is I had a number of calls in the last <clears throat> two weeks. It had to do with uh, when you renew your license on your car, you're going, to, you're going to have a wheel tax for Dane County you have to pay. But don't pay the DOT bill if you have Madison wheel tax on there because Fitchburg does not have a wheel tax. So take a look at that to make sure when you pay in for your license, if you just send it in, some of them, some people at DOT by mistake will send us, because we have Madison address, you'll get a bill for DOT from DOT. And if you don't look at it, you'll send in a check and you'll be paying a wheel tax you don't want to pay. Just food for thought. The second thing is, is um, I do appreciate the article in the Fitchburg Star for our veterans. It's not about me, it's about our veterans and to get that park going. And just a little press misquote, um, I work for the police department, but I was never the chief. That's all I got. All right, Randy. Uh, nothing to report this time. All right, uh, Dorothy. Yeah, I wanted to mention that I've somewhat pleasure being a multitasker. I've been watching the recount process happening on the cameras that they have available streaming there. Um, watching Tracy today be pulled up in front of Scott and with the attorneys for both sides uh, of what I counted. Um, they had 63 of our ballots that were questioned mostly for insignificant. Oh, the, the, the clerk didn't put the initial in the right place sort of things. They're, they're being really picky on the Trump side about trying to get ballots not counted. Um, of the 63 that I listened to this evening, there was just one that had an actual problem and that was with the uh, witness address. The vast majority of the ballots over, over the days that have been drawn down is because of witness problems. So that, that has become a big issue and a huge learning curve, I think. Next time I say um, the clerk tends to be too anal, remind me, she's not. She needs to be. They, they have to be this careful because in this instance, um, there, there was one township with 4,000 4, people that they found problems with 39 of the ballots and what they do with the drawdown because the envelope has an issue that makes it not a legal ballot but they don't have the ballots matching with the envelopes anymore, then they have to randomly sift through all the ballots for that township or that ward or whatever and randomly pull. So out of those 4,000, and it was um, almost 3,000 people that had voted in that town, uh, 39 people lost their vote. And the biggest reason was because 
the clerk did not go back and check and make sure before um before they approved and counted the ballots they did not make sure that the witness information was accurate and those ballots were pulled because there was not a witness address or something on that order so i'm really 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 wanting to commend and I, i've sent a note to county already asking if we could do an um resolution acknowledging the efforts of people that are spending day after day and th this was the third day that i've seen tracy spending time there uh fourth day i saw her just momentarily i don't know how long she was there but these people are in conference room chairs and on concrete for 12 hour days they are doing a tremendous job um the way that scott is running the recount he's being very professional and very nonpartisan. he is laying out the expectations and he's just managing it in a very efficient way that they're not going to get complaints about not that all these issues won't land in court anyway so if if people want to send me any questions about recount process i've been learning a whole lot the last few days so that's all i'll say all right joe sure. um so first i will start by saying um ha ho that's a um an indigenous greeting uh november is um national native american um, heritage month there are 11 federally recognized uh, tribes in the state of wisconsin um anybody in fitchburg uh, in the greater madison area is sitting on ho-chunk land so i want to acknowledge um, the ho-chunk people um, we have 101 um, native american residents in the city of fitchburg um, one of them um, was is uh, Miss Ada Deer, who uh, was the first uh, Native American, or the she was uh, the first Native American woman in Wisconsin to run for Congress. Um, she lives in District Four. Uh, she's in her 80s um, right now, and she's uh, been incredibly involved in civic life, and um, you know has been uh, head of the Native American Studies Department as well as a longtime uh, social worker and. Um, activist for her people, the Menominee uh, people. So I just want to make sure to acknowledge our uh, indigenous um, brothers and sisters, um, you know, here and across the country. Um, secondly, I would like to um, say rest in peace um, to two giants in our community. Um, one is Miss um, Selena Pettigrew. She was an activist in the Ally Drive neighborhood. Um, she passed on November 11th. Um, she's um, survived by her two daughters as well as eight grandchildren. Um, you know, Miss Miss Pettigrew was um, very active in the Boys and Girls Club in the um, pantry as well as um, providing a lot of services to um, older adults in our uh, community. And uh, she will be missed. Uh, in addition to um, Miss Sina Davis, who passed away last year, um, I'd also like to say rest in peace to Miss Lori Mann. Um, she is a uh, mother of five adult children and one uh, grandchild. Um, she is the founder of the Man Scholars Program uh, and um, was, you know, her contributions to um, young people, to families uh, in, in the greater Madison area uh, is hard to put into words. So um, the lives she impacted were, were incredible. So rest in peace to uh, Miss Lori Mann Carey. Um, I would like to just um, put in a plug. I've emailed this to staff and to the council, but I want to announce it to the public. Um, Wisconsin Extension is hosting a um, restorative justice uh, summit. We had our first uh, event last uh, week, and there are two more sessions. Um, one will be on um, December 11th. The other will be on January 8th. Um, it's, op it's free to the public. Uh, it's going to be completely online and it'll feature um, organizations from across the state um, who work in the field of restorative justice and if you are unfamiliar with the term restorative justice i, I encourage you to um, do some research on it um, 
There were uh, two flu shot clinics uh, in the uh, allied neighborhood um, led by uh, Fitchburg Pharmacy. Um, they had uh, 12 participants in total, so 12 folks were able to get uh, free flu shots um, thanks to the work of uh, Fitchburg Pharmacy and uh, UW Health. And then um, finally, there is um, an opening on the Healthy Neighborhoods Initiative Committee uh, and if you either work or live in the uh, King James neighborhood, um, west of Verona Road in District 1, um, you are eligible. So I, I would encourage anybody who's interested to fill out an application um, and submit it online. That's all I've got. All right. Thank you. Get real. Uh, two topics for today. The first is I, I was able to attend the EMS meeting, I believe it was last week, and uh, it was uh, announced that, I guess it was announced a little bit earlier, but it was talked about at the meeting that they have recently purchased travel ventilators for the ambulances, and they're the first, we're the first EMS service in Dane County to have travel ventilators, so it's obviously an important thing uh, currently right now. Uh, there was also discussion about changing the financial uh, financial need requirements. So if someone ha can't pay their ambulance service bill uh, after insurance pays for whatever portion they will, um, there's an ability for some people to apply for financial aid. And we uh, basically match that with the, the requirements for food stamps. So um, if you make enough income or, or make as little income to get food stamps, you can also uh, apply for financial assistance for ambulance bills. Um, so I thought that was a good discussion, and I'm sure that meeting's available online if you want to see, learn more about that. And then the second thing is I, uh, I just want to make a, a call out to the city of Fitchburg about uh, moving meetings, city meetings, to virtual um, and talk a little bit about that. So we are in a full-blown public health crisis right now, and some alarming recent statistics the first five months of the pandemic in Dane County, we had 3,300 cases of COVID and we have had 3,300 new cases in just the last 10 days. We are seeing an exponential rise. And another alarming statistic, one out of every 100 people in Dane County has tested positive in the last two weeks. One out of every 100, not, not 100 people tested, 100 people in Dane County. And about 70% of Wisconsin hospitals will likely have a shortage of healthcare workers by the end of the week. And we need to be very clear that the most dangerous place to be during this pandemic is inside a building with a person outside of your household. And the longer you're in that space with them, the riskier it is. Our meetings here at the city usually last between 60, and five, 60 minutes and five hours. Uh, and in that amount of time, masks and physical distancing will do little to protect a person from passing the virus to another. And this is very well understood at this point uh, in the pandemic. Fitchburg has really demonstrated an ability to host meetings over Zoom very effectively since pretty early on in the meeting, uh, in, since the pandemic. And we've done it with members of the council, members of committees, and also members of the public. We also broadcast these meetings live and have the video recordings available the next day, which is above and beyond what a lot of municipalities in, in the state of Wisconsin do, thanks to our community access television staff. And it is my contention that there is absolutely no reason why anyone should be in city hall chambers during the meeting. And that is except for the community access television staff who absolutely need to be present in order to broadcast the meeting live. And in order to protect their health, they should be the only ones in the chamber. I strongly believe the city needs to lead on this. I believe we have been doing the minimum for far too long. First, we waited to impose a city hall and council chambers mask requirement until the county health department issued a mandate. Now there's a county public health order to eliminate indoor gatherings as a last ditch effort to prevent our ICUs and hospitals from being completely overwhelmed. The fact that we can exempt ourselves from this order with a loophole is very short-sighted. We should be leading on this issue and modeling best practice for our community. We should be having fully virtual meetings and we should protect the health of the city staff that have no choice but to be in chambers. I have heard arguments that we need to make city meetings available to those who don't have internet access. I agree with that, but I will make the point that Zoom always has an option to join by phone. I've participated in full length meetings on the phone only, and we just need to create the correct signage and the notice on the agenda to clarify how, the, how to join the meeting by phone if you do not have internet access. 
every person that can be virtual should be required to be virtual. There are people in the chamber right now that I know for a fact can be virtual because they have done it in the past and yet they are in chambers today. And if somebody really needs in-person accommodations, which may happen, we should find a way to make them do that, but just in-person individually in conference rooms in the city, similar to how the, the administrator talked about one-on-one -on -one appointments to pay taxes, we can do one-on-one -on -one, um, meetings to participate in city meetings. So I am calling on the city to move to fully virtual meetings with an option to join by phone. We need to protect our city staff and our residents, and we need to be leaders on this issue. So please stay home as much as possible. Wear a mask at all times outside of the home. Our healthcare workers are literally begging us to help them. They are already overwhelmed and it is crisis level right now. We do not frequently face life or death decisions in the city council, but this is one of them. Thanks. Julia, go ahead. Okay. Um, I will echo Gabriela sentiment about this. Um, so the other thing I want to mention is um, a small business shop on Saturday, please do it online. And the other thing I want to mention is um, if you're gonna shop online, uh, if there is a, a good business here in the city of Pitchford that is called Cosa Boutique on Nesville Road, that if you shop, uh, a percentage of the sale is going to go to our inclusive playground. So I will um, ask you if you're planning to do that. Think about that a portion of your sale is going to be um, invested in, um, in, in our um, inclusive playground that or park that is a resolution is coming for the December meeting. So um, my other, um, I want to say is happy Thanksgiving. Uh, Feliz Día de Acción de Gracias, um, wear a mask, usen una máscara, and stay home, quédese en la casa. Gracias. All right. A few additional things for me. First, uh, I think Tracy mentioned it last meeting, but uh, December 1st is when, uh, as you know, four of the council members are up for re-election this spring, and you can start getting signatures December 1st, and you have uh, the month of December to get your paperwork and your signatures and everything in there. If anyone from the public is interested, uh, just be aware of those deadlines. Also, there is not going to be a meeting on December 22nd. Uh, there's a lot of staff trying to use up some vacation time, not going to be around uh, much earned vacation time. And so we are not going to have a council meeting on December 22nd. Uh, hopefully you're not doing a whole lot of traveling, but um, just want to make sure that everyone knew that. And then I will uh, hopefully have a little more information on redistricting uh, next meeting. I've talked to Tracy a little bit, but uh, the kind of first step is going to be January, February, March is having applications open for people that want to be on the redistricting committee. And it's going to be um, pretty much uh, set up like it was 10 years ago using some of the information from the county as well. Dorothy was nice enough to share me share with me what the county is doing this year. And at each district will be represented. Uh, there's gonna be seven people total. And I've asked Randy to chair it from the council perspective since his seat is not up for reelection this spring. And so uh, we'll be asking for people to apply for that during February, March, which will actually also coincide with when we're gonna be promoting people to apply for openings on any of our committees actually, um, January, February, March, so that in April we can appoint people to any openings that there might be out there. I know there's gonna be a plan commission one for sure. It sounds like there might be a healthy neighborhoods one and there's always a number of other ones as well. So I will be promoting that and you can feel free to promote that as well. But uh, that'll start in January. Other than that, that is all I have. So we can go on. There is no unfinished business. And then right. you- Can I ask a question of- Yeah, Dorothy, yeah. Um, get Gabriella's comments uh, possibly need to answer by staff. Um, she'd mentioned um, the ambulance calls for respiratory issues. And she mentioned um, people needing to be online with um, particularly Sarah kind of freezing up. It's like, okay, there's probably a little bit of an internet connection issue. 
for both of those questions, I want to know if we can use CARES money to uh, pay for ambulance calls related to respiratory issues for people that do not have insurance. And can we provide hotspots with CARES money to people that we are now, that we're talking about requiring to attend virtually that are members of our either council or various committees that will be meeting? Uh, we can ask Missy to, Misty to get that information. I don't think she's online anymore, so we can ask her to do that. We can do that. All right. Thank you. Yep. Going on to new business. Uh, let's see. I don't since this finance committee thing. Julia, do you want to do a resolution or a motion? I mean. Okay. We are going to. Oh, new business. Okay. Yep. So I need approval of resolution R dash two uh, ten dash twenty amending the twenty twenty general fund budget for the external investigation services. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Joe. Did finance approve? Yeah, we approve. All right. And then. But I, uh, I have a, so I want to make some changes in the resolution. Do you want to do that now or do you want to go into closed session first and talk yeah, about no, I, stuff? Yeah, we can go to clo closed session first. Do you want to make that motion? I would say, Gabriela, can you make the. the so you yeah, I moved to, to the closed session. Uh, you got to read the yeah, entire not... thing, actually. Well, yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. You have to read the entire thing on number one. Hang on. Uh, I move to move, move to. I move to go to closed session on resolution R two ten twenty amending the twenty twenty. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Oh no no, that's right. I move to go to closed session on resolution R two ten twenty amending the twenty twenty general fund budget external investigation services. Uh, actually, the, the paragraph under closed session is the one you have to read session. word for word. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me. Okay, I move to go to closed session. Uh, motion to go into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin statutes nineteen point eight five one b considering dismissal, demotion, licensing, or discipline of any public employee or person licensed by a board or commission or the investigation of charges against such person, consider an investigation of conduct of city administrator. All right, is there a second? Second. Second by Joel. All right, all in favor, do you have a question, Julia? No, but let's oh. approve that and then I have a okay. procedural question. All right, all in favor of going to closed session, say aye. 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 And oppose nay. All right, we can. So, um, oh, do you want to do the motion? Go back into open session. Move to go back into open session. Second. Seconded by Sarah. All in favor say aye. 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 And oppose nay. All right. Uh, amendments. I know Julia had a wording amendment that she for sure want to do. Do you want to do that? Yes, um, so I would like to um, to um, to remove from the second whereas in the resolution page and only leave that um, the a summary report and, and provide a presentation to the mayor and council. Remove the all. All right, sir, so second. Second. Seconded by Sarah. Any discussion on that? All right. All in favor of changing that wording, say aye. Aye. And opposed, nay. All right, that is approved. Any other amendments at all? Uh, go ahead, Gabriella. Can I just make a statement just about the- Yeah. Oh, yeah. Other comments, too. Yeah. Okay. Um, so- I just want to get a couple of things on the record for those of you that are watching this um, with interest. I, you know, I, my priority in this investigation is to make sure that we're keeping the, the health, mental health and physical health of staff top of mind. And, um, and I think the staff of the city of Fitchburg, the residents of the city of Fitchburg and the city's reputation really matter in this discussion. Um, it's something that I've been 
been thinking about a lot with all of this. I do think that this investigation is much needed. I'm glad it's being done by a third party. I do think it was a little slow coming, which was disappointing to me. Um, I do believe that the scope of the investigation should be expanded uh, to include testimony from staff and possible, po possibly looking into past employment. Um, based on our conversation, it sounds like that might not be financially possible. Um, however, I, I do hope that um, maybe there's some way for certain staff that have something specific to say to reach out to the Riesling Group when this investigation starts. And I also think that uh, I, well, I guess what I'll say is I wish that the city would consider a suspension of the administrator in the lead up to, or during the investigation. It sounds like there is not enough support for that. And ultimately, um, this comes down to the mayor and the mayor is gonna own this. So uh, I'm happy to support this resolution so we can get an independent investigation. And I look forward to um, getting the results of that. Any other comments at all? All right, seeing none. Then we can go into. Oh or, yes, I want oh. to mention something. I want yeah, to go add, ahead, Julia. Yep. Yeah, I want to add that this one is. Uh, it's not fair that the city taxpayer need to pay for this investigation. Um, but we don't have any other option. Um, so we have to do it. But it's not fair for the city of Fitchburg taxpayer to pay for this investigation. All right. Anyone else again? All right. Then all in favor of approving as amended, say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. All right, that is approved. Moving along, we did director for all one. Uh, director you, for, Mayor, can yeah. I just interrupt? I think you need to make a motion to approve as amended and have it seconded. We did, we did that at the very beginning, made the motion before we started. Oh, yes, you did. Okay. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. It's been a long day for you. <laughs> all right. Um, does someone on finance want to make this motion? For... Um, yeah, I don't know. Randy, do you want to do it? Uh, the drug referral number two, resolution R20620. I can do it and you do the next one. Yes, please do. <laughs> okay. And uh, I move approval of resolution R-206-20 is the Family Medical Leave Act, FMLA, carry forward, carry over memorandum of understanding between the city and firefighters local 311. Is there a second? Second. Second by Randy. Did finance approve? Yeah, we approve. Uh, and this is uh, something similar that we did with the police department last council meeting. Yep. Is, um, is uh, the, that all sworn full-time firefighters are eligible to request to carry over up to a total of 180 hours combined, uh, combined compensata compensatory time or annual vacation time for the purpose of the um, approved FMLA event. So it's, it's very it's the same one that we approve for the police officers, but it's, it's for the firefighters. And we also approved it for all staff uh, earlier yeah, as well. Okay. So, all right. All in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. All right, that's approved. Randy, you want to do number three? Yes, number three. Motion to move. Motion to move resolution R207-20. Approving state municipal agreement with the Wisconsin Department of Transportation for the reconstruction of Lacey Road. <clears throat> Second. Uh, Seconded by Gabriella. Second. And did finance approve? Finance did approve. All right. And what's this about? Uh, the background the City of Fitchburg's Common Council has authorized Resolution R233 19. Submittal of an application for consideration of transportation facilities, economic assistance, and development, uh, commonly known as T grant for up to one million from the Wisconsin Department of Transportation for the reconstruction of Lacey Road. Um, the eligible transportation improvement costs estimated to be approximately 15% of the total transportation infrastructure cost 
and consideration of the T grant application is contingent upon execution of a detailed state municipal agreement between the City of Fitchburg and the Wisconsin DOT Southwest Region. And then, uh, all right, uh, Dorothy, go ahead. What portions of Lacey Road are we looking at? I believe this is over by the intersection with Seminole Highway, right? Mm -hmm. Seminole Highway yeah. and West, is it? Yeah, I think it's Seminole Highway West, West. towards Fitchburg. From where to where? Is it the intersection plus what to what? Intersection to is it? I always get this wrong. Is it come? Pardon? Fitcherona. No, I don't think it goes out of Fitcherona. Does it go that far? Not quite. It goes to it Com goes down that way. Is it is it Commonwealth? Commonwealth. Oh. Commerce. I think. Commerce. Commerce. Where commerce will come out anyway. Where commerce will come out. Oh. Yeah. Does that answer your question, Dorothy? Yeah, I would have liked a map in the packet, but yeah, I'll live with that. Okay. Anything else? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. All right. That's approved. And one more. Looks like public. What do you want to do with Sarah? Public Works. Make a motion. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead, Sarah. Okay. Make a motion to approve Resolution R two eight twenty. A resolution granting an underground electric and gas easement and outlet 35 in Terravesa. Seconded by Julia. Did Public Works approve? Yes. And Planning Commission also approved. Do you want to speak to it, Sarah? Um, this one was just kind of brought forward as a standard. Uh, MGE &E had to change a little bit for it as they got into the project. So uh, just as they move forward with the project, they discovered that it had to move, uh, or that they needed a six foot wide easement for their uh, utilities. All right. Any questions? All right, seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And opposed nay. All right, that is also approved. Uh, that is everything on the agenda. Next council meeting is in a couple of weeks. I think it's two weeks. And then uh, Camille Hole is in January. Dorothy. Yeah, before we close up tonight, I'd like to hear from Tracy how the recount stuff is going for her. Sure, just briefly, uh, Fitchburg finished with their portion of the recount today. We started uh, one through four late last evening and we got through the envelopes and the ballots, uh, finished up the ballots this morning. And then we did the rest of the polling locations starting at 8.15 this morning and we ended at about 7.30 tonight. Uh, my records show we had three drawdowns um, and they were basically for witnesses addresses not being on the envelopes. Um, we didn't have any ballots that were um, thrown out that were disputed. All of the disputed ballots were um, voted uncontested, usually two to one, sometimes three to nothing. Um, so it went very well for us. Um, our chief election inspectors and all of our election workers did a phenomenal job with this election. Um, I'm very proud of each and every one of them. Uh, they start with Madison tomorrow. Madison is the rest of the recount. Um, all the other municipalities in Dane County are finished. Fitchburg was the last. So. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? Moved by Randy. Saying by Tom. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Aye. All right. We are adjourned. Happy Thanksgiving.